Welcome back to the tangent. Today we have a really, really full room. Um, there is uh, six of us in the room today. Um, we're gonna start with Katie. Say hi. Hi. We have Tim. Hey. He's a normal. We all know Tim. Yeah, I'm a normie. We have Huck, otherwise known as Nick, but we're gonna call him Huck for today. Hello. You know Devin? Yo. Myself, James. And today we have a first, a newbie. He's our cousin, mine and Tim's cousin, Tyler. Hello. Um, he's been around us for all his life, unfortunately. He's had well, to deal with four years. <laughs> and we haven't been able to corrupt him properly. So, um, Tyler's, Such more, a shame. Tyler's more of a fantasy type guy. Um, he gets along with us in the group really well. Um, if you remember our old D&D podcast, um, he does play D&D with the best of us. And he knows enough. But today, we're not going to do D&D. We are going to go into something a little more sci-fi, uh, maybe even slightly horror. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sci- yeah. Sci- sci-fi horror is probably its genre. And it's a TV show that's on Netflix, and it's a Netflix original. We are actually going to do a podcast on Stranger Things. Yay! Yay! So I'm excited for this one. I'm going to open the floor up, but I have a few things. <clears throat> Stranger Things to me was one of those those shows that everybody kept talking about, and then I was like, all of a sudden, I'm way behind. I'm like a season behind. I'm like, uh, maybe I should watch this. But again, I'm not into horror. We've talked about that before, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, because it's kind of a sci-fi horror thing, and then I watched it and was hooked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Couldn't stop watching it. I binged yeah. the Here's... first two seasons, I literally, in like three days. The, the thing the thing is, I'm normally, I'm normally way behind on, on things like, you know, the, like a popular thing. But for some reason, I was, I was on YouTube one day, it was like, like, season one of Stranger Things had, like, just come out. And this random person on YouTube who I trusted was just like, you guys gotta check this out, it's a really good show. And it's got some, like, you know, fun D&D Easter eggs and, and junk. And I was like, okay. And literally, I was watching it by the end of that day. So I didn't even get to the part where everyone was hyping the show before I was done with the they show. Were, it kind of oh, came so out you of had saw, you had yeah, watched that's it. True. That's you true. watched it before the popularity. Well, Boom. Right. I watched, and then, and then, and then, Tim watched it before it was cool. Right. <laughs> but but the, thing is, the thing is, if I had waited until it had become cool, I'm pretty confident I wouldn't have watched it. Right. Well, I, here's, that's exactly here's, why I didn't watch Game of Thrones. And that's how I first heard of it, too, was a couple people had told me, oh, you gotta watch this new show. It's called Stranger Things. It's about sci-fi. You'd love it. You're a big nerd like that. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Because I'm, I'm a bit contrarian when it comes to big, huge things like that. Because yep. I really try to, like, because it's so built up and so hyped up sometimes that I'm a bit hesitant on it. But one night I finally got... Huck, excuse me. You can, call him, <laughs> you can call him Nick. You're married to him. That's fine. I'll just call him Huck. Um, you, you can call him Hubby Bubby. <laughs> you want me to call you Hubby Bubby? So it's, never mind. Nick is um, fine. Disgusting. <laughs> my basement. So, Nick is fine. Um, <laughs> so anyway, but no. I so Nick Huck and I finally sat down and watched it, and within like the first episode, we were dying laughing. It was adorable. Dustin's my favorite. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that. Immediately, I was like, "Okay, Dustin, we have to watch." Dustin, this whole thing. Dustin, and Steve are the obvious heroes of the show. Yes, um, yes, yes. Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve, my buddy. D- Dustin and Steve, and Steve's new new uh, friend that he worked with at the at the friggin' ice cream parlor. Oh, she was oh, great. Girl? Oh my yeah. gosh, she is awesome. Man, I like, really like. She was so she is so apprehensive about everything that really people. happened that she. She like made him go through it over and over again, and then when she realized the stuff was real, she was just like, "I'm all in. Yeah, let's do this." Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so going back to the first season, I mean, jumping straight in, we're gonna be. You meet in the first episode. You meet the gang. Mm-hmm. They're all playing D and D in in the basement. Like um, middle schoolers, and, uh, of course, like you do. I and, mean, and then you meet the demigorgon, which is freaking. Like well, I believe, in D and D, you, you don't actually, want to meet a demigorgon. I, I, I believe you. You actually meet the demigorgon first yeah. because it starts off with the with the breakout scene in the in the in the facility. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. well, right. But I meant the and then, D&D. And then, I and meant then the D and D demigorgon, yes. the, 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 yes. one little, the little figurine that he throws out there. Right. That, yeah, but that then it flashes to the basement well, with those, the with the little figure. Yeah. For those that don't know, the main characters of the show are Mike, Will. Dustin and Lucas. 
Those are the kids, quote unquote. That yeah, are but then you have a you kids. have a very good filling cast behind them. Yes. The the teenagers. Well, I, would, yes. I would count eleven well, in amongst the kids. And Hopper. Well. And eleven. Can't and forget about well, no, no, no. But the thing, the thing is, if we're if we're, if we're, if we're, if we're segregating, because we have, we have actually like groups of main characters. We don't oh have, yeah. We don't, have one, a, we don't have one group of main characters. We have, we have we have sections of main. I characters. think how the show goes. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's what but, makes, but makes the we show have, we great. Have, we have the kids, right. which which you you laid out the the four kids and you had eleven, so that it's yes, that, it's those five. Right. right. And the then teenagers. You have, you have, you have the teenagers, and then you have the adults, which is Hopper and Will's mom. I can't remember her name. Joyce. Wasn't was it, what's his name? Didn't what's his name play a part for a minute too? Um, the one that was dating. Uh, Joyce. Joyce for We're a talking minute. about Bob. Or was that the se- was that the second season? Bob Bob's second season. Bob's okay. Second season. Bob was great. And then you got <laughs> that one kid. I can't think of his name. The older oh, one and his um, the mom. Will's brother. Yes. But that's that's the teen group. That's the teen yeah. group. Yeah. That's, so, that's, that's, so, that's Mike's that's so Mike's Will, older sister and Will's Steve, older brother. Yeah. So right. Mike's and older Steve sister and, and then Steve and all them. Is, and is, Steve is, is like is, the popular is, guy. Um, that's dating Nancy. That's Will's dating Nancy, sister. which is Mike's sister. Mike's older sister, that's right. And then right. Will's older brother, why his name? John? John, Jonathan, Jonathan yeah. Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. Those three, Very like, kind of group together, and they kind of uh, help there's, there's a lot of characters in this show, so right. it's, a, it's a lot to keep track of. Oh, yeah, of. and there is a lot. If you haven't, seen, if you haven't seen it in a little while, then, then yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely need a refresher. You guys said Steve, and I was like, who the like we we yeah, like bust like a notebook or something. Steve was shit. a popular kid yeah, that was no, dating I, Nancy. No, well, no, no. I, I, I figured it out once once I broke it down by like again. the groups of the show. I'm like, what? Well, I'm I was only thinking about like my favorites was basically Dustin and Hopper. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hopper does I, a good I, job. And I, I, I'm like, I like I like Hopper a lot of the time, but at the, at the same time, it, 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 yeah. I I, I I sometimes get disillusioned with characters that I think make really poor decisions. <laughs> um, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. That, but that's television. That that is that is television. That is, and, and the thing, so, and the thing is, some you know, there are people that say like, you know, if you don't have any conflict, then then you know, what are you, what are you doing a show about? Well, you know, season three of Stranger Things solved that problem for us because it just gave us Steve and Dustin going around doing literally all the right things. <laughs> <laughs> and they still run into conflict. That is yeah, true. That's, I you do very much like, like Steve too. Steve is a too. great character. Steve, Steve was really good. Steve yeah. really surprised me. Season two, Steve, Steve is awesome. Yes, Steve surprised me because you would you would think how he's for, at first portrayed is that he's just your typical douchey teenager. Who and, just and that's, that's definitely how he starts out. Well, he starts off as just as just typical first douchey of all, dude. Let's do right. the setting here. We also need to talk about the fact that what's the first season is like nineteen eighty two. I think so. Yeah. Uh, in the golden age. No, no, it's later than that. It's no, 83 it's, it's, or 84. It's, it's 83 or 84 yeah, okay. because the second season is supposed to be 85. But, but, I knew yeah. it was like mid to early 80s. Probably 83 because, because remember yeah. Ghostbusters yeah. came yeah, out right. in 1984. Season 2 is 84. No, so no, season 1 is 83, season 2 is 84, and season 3 is 85. Yes. Oh, so it's that 70s show. will be 86. Yeah, and the thing is is that they did a great... kind of very much like They did a great job. Yeah, it's good. They did a great job of putting it in the setting. So, yes. yes, it's based in the 80s. So there's a lot of 80s nostalgia that gets brought back up. And the big thing that I've noticed, I noticed in this more than anything else is the smoking. Yes. So yes. back in the 80s, yeah. smoking on TV was not a big deal. In regular yeah. TV no, shows. It really, it really wasn't. And a lot of people smoked. Yeah. yeah and the thing is, is it was, it was one of those things that just, it just happened. So again, nowadays, seeing smoking happen in, um, in TV shows, it, it, you don't Only see it. Only the bad guys smoke. No, no, no that, that's it. not. That's not even actually. That's not even actually true. The thing is, you you can have angsty heroes or like 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 uh, like detectives or something. You know, you you can have you can have certain types of good guys smoke. It's, it's just, just a rare thing that it's and the thing, and the thing is, character. And the thing is, you may you may only show it like once or twice to show yes, this character smokes, and then you may not even bring it back up again. Right. right. But yeah. But it's every like, other it's, time it's that I like, like a rugged character flaw. Well, here's yeah. the other yeah. thing. Yeah. So like, it builds kind of in like season three. Or or, or it could be like a, the the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie 
where it can show character growth. It's like it, where yeah, he smokes hoppers. all throughout all throughout the movie. Hoppers and gets lung sucks. cancer. The lung cancer gets ripped out of him, and then he, he switches to gum. You know, and <laughs> right. so the and only that's his character other, growth. The only other TV smoking. show yeah. that for me that I can remember that had smoking in it was Friends, when Chandler would hide his smoking right. well, from uh, yeah, 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 like the sitcom yeah, stuff kind of have like when that see, I think it was right before show. season three premiered. Had I think so, or right. It was either right before season three premiered or soon after. People were up in arms about the smoking, about it showing smoking and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So apparently, according to what I remember, they changed some of those scenes to show less smoking than what they did before. Because apparently the first two seasons were okay, but the third season was not. Well, I, I can I understand that. I think that it, I think it finally stress, just okay. He right, needs him to right, smoke. exactly. Hopper fights monsters for a living. Exactly, oh, yes, which is why right. I was like, wait a minute. I think it just more came. I think it just more came to the fact that somebody it became it more popular by season right. three, and, and more people were watching it. That very well could be it. And a lot of things is like the more people that watch, the more Karens you're gonna find. The thing is, it's a the thing is, it's it, has, with it, has, it has kids as the main character, and when you do that, a lot of people will mistake having kids as the main character for being a kid-friendly show. Right. right. Yeah. Especially Which, when the kids curse. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. Okay, no, no, no. And, that, and that's the thing. In the 80s, that would have been a kid-friendly thing. Yeah, that's true. You know, we had things like Monster Squad, where they, where they you know, use the F word. And, Wolfman. And, and talk about nudie magazines in your, in, your kid, in your kids' movies. Yeah, that's you know? True. Like that was that was a thing that happened. Like that was that was a kid. Just not exist back then. That was just that was that was kid friendly at the time. You gotta understand that. I mean, nowadays nowadays like kids get baby more than they should, and things are being taken off of TV that would never. So if you look at some of the old eighties cartoons and 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 seventies cartoons. A lot of that stuff that they have on the cartoons wouldn't fly because look at G.I. Joe was nothing but guns and armies. Yeah. Now, nobody ever technically got seen dying, but you would not see a show nowadays that Never is full seen of G.I. guns. Joe commercial right. in my life. I was born in 95. I've never seen a G.I. Joe commercial in my oh, life, man. I don't think. I love the amount really? of similarities of them. 80s references. Maybe you are like the show, but no, never been like an action figure oh, or anything. Yeah. Masters uh, of the I Universe. Remember, Ghostbusters. See, what, what were you born in? Classic D&D. Okay. Old school TVs. They're so Completely off topic. Like, They're doing a, a live action D&D show. Oh really? Yeah, How's yeah. that going? I might be. They they just announced it. Like oh, really? Oh, awesome. Oh, that'd be cool. Who? Uh, Wizards of the Coast is going to put out a, a live action D and D TV show. They announced it like on like uh, like November second. Well, they need to get back to doing the magic TV show first. No. Yes. Oh, I just want to say no. since we got like six of us here, the, today, thing, the thing is they can integrate them because like, magic and D and D are the same universe. Talk a lot, and so is everybody else. Oh, you heard about and that? We're going to be very off topic. <laughs> And, We're and, going off on a big And team. James is going to sit here and grab his little beard and goatee. And so, speaking of D&D &D Stranger Things. Things. like Batman. <laughs> no, Actually, D&D &D did put out a Stranger Things starter kit. Did they? Yes, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. What's that? Is like, because it had a bunch of minis. Of of the monsters that were in Stranger Things, right? Yeah, Stranger yeah. Things starter kit, including the it was, it was, a, it was a Dungeons and Dragons starter kit for Stranger Things. Yeah, it's it's uh you know that 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 campaign that Mike writes <coughs> right. where they go they go in uh at the, it's at the end of season one. It's supposed to be that module, so mm -hmm. he, it's it's that adventure. Yeah, huh. Uh, yeah, I think now I know they the did something. I know like they the did release uh -huh. something. Um, they did release something. It was a, built in AD and D mm -hmm. that they released that it was a Stranger Things AD and D kit. <coughs> so I think it w had that module already in it. <clears throat> so I think you were playing that because we sold it at GameStop. No, no, yeah. it, it, the thing is, it was it was meant to look like AD and D. It was meant to look like the old AD and D five E, but it's oh. but it's, it's fifth edition. Okay. I, I own it. Lego. It's, it's, I think it's in the car. This wouldn't Oh, you own anything. that? Yeah. Lego and Have you looked at it, read it? Like, I think after season one or whatever, that they introduced an upside-down 
Lego set. Oh yeah. <laughs> that you can that really cool. that All was, Lego sets can be upside down. Like, Didn't know you do that. <laughs> this is true. That it's you just the have to build them all the everything. way up to your wall. It showed the demi gorgon and everything too. It was pretty neat. Um, so I mean, we've we? kind of steered. We've kind of steered we away really from the actual plot, show. Really, we went over. No, some I, I stuff. wasn't sure how yeah. we were going to do the plot yet, but well, we because we haven't really even you know we we put our toes in, so let's continue. So like yes. you know, because the main the, the main antagonist in the sec in the first season is the demi gorgon, right? Is right. It so demi gorgon the. Like oh, demon yeah. prince demi gorgon, or okay. is it just no, okay. the demi gorgon? They they call it the demi gorgon. Okay. So at the, really at the beginning the right. at the beginning of season one, uh, they're running a D and D campaign and they're going to go fight the demi gorgon. Right. Then all this random crap happens. Will disappears. They run into Eleven. Okay. Eleven's a psychic, yep. and she's trying to trying to with the fact that she's never really interacted with people on like any sort of real social scale. Yeah. She's trying to use what she has available to her to illustrate to the other kids where Will is and what's going on. And she uses the the miniature for the Demigorgon to represent the bad guy. Okay. Which is this big monster thing. Okay. So they just call it the Demigorgon. That's not what it actually is. Gotcha. Okay. But this monster thing is from the Upside Down. Yeah. Right. So, which is um, basically like which they they liken to the like plane the of shadow realm. They, they liken they liken it to like, the plane of shadow, which yeah, yeah, in yeah. current D and D is no longer a thing. It's it's just the shadow fell. Yes, um, but roughly roughly similar. Mm-hmm. So, so getting into the actual story it, itself, it's the world, but in grayscale. So yes. they they find a way to break up break the plane of our basic existence and end up in a different. Dimension, for lack of better terms, the parallel universe. It's kind of like a yeah, yeah. A, yes. and a and parallel underworld is kind right. of what so it is. Yes. they end up they end up using the reference of calling it the upside down because if you really look at this this dimension on when they're doing scenes from within the upside down, it is literally a parallel of our universe but in a darker. Form so right. it basically, it's, 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 basically like it's, it's basically been... a, a dead version of, of the regular world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's got all the same buildings, but they're all rotting. There's mm-hmm. spores that come out of like it's, it's basically like a it, it almost reminds me of like a, the Last of Us it, with the with yeah. the spores and crap right. all around. Yeah. If you breathe too many of them in, then you, you it starts to yeah. it starts to to poison you and you get it's yeah. a video game. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um. So it. So they they have to like go in with like masks and like. Mm-hmm. Like clean suits and crap, right? Um, so it starts as a, as a military or, or a government on, experiment that yeah. they're yeah. trying to break through, and then they end up breaking yeah, through. They, 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 the they, end up, they, 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 end up, they tie they tie it to MK Ultra, the the actual okay, the yeah, actual yeah, yeah, experiment yeah. MK Ultra. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, something gets brought into the regular world. Because they're trying to fight the communists, because it's the 80s. Uh, right. I mean, <laughs> well, and the Russians are getting doing, ahead of the story. You are okay, getting ahead of the story, the because it you're, does you're have jumping a lot Because in season three, the communists show up, <laughs> and it's and it's the U.S. military, you're who are, pseudo, who are yeah. pseudo bad guys, it's versus so bad. the you communists, are, who are, are also are, bad guys. And that's just <laughs> it. It's so funny, because you've never seen it, but yet, all of a sudden, the communism the and, and the Russian plays a big key role here. I'm familiar. I'm familiar okay. with U.S. history. Like, like, right. like right. season season one has a a conspiracy theorist journalist who's who's running around. Oh, yeah. yeah, who's running around and he's trying to be all like, we got communist spies everywhere, and like, and he, he ends up mm-hmm. he ends up being both right and wrong because he thinks it's he thinks it's the Russians, but it's the monster and the random uh, you know MK Ultra government. Guys, right. yeah, and he's and he's, he's he thinks they're the Russians, so they are doing things that are shady that no one's paying attention to and no one else knows about. It just happens to be. The, it just happens to be he's part, wrong about what group it is. Instead right. of the, the bad government, quote unquote, bad government. Well, yeah, he is very like eh, about either of them, honestly. Yeah, yeah and the yeah. thing and the thing is, We're it is it is actually sort of a rogue section of the government yeah. because in yeah. season two. The guy who's the head of uh, who's the head of the experiment is on the run mm-hmm. from the rest of the government because they didn't know exactly what the hell he was doing. <laughs> because like bad. Yeah. Whole, anyways, experimenting on, on little girls is so wrong. so season one episode yeah. one. <laughs> you lose you lose one of the main kids, which is Will, and he gets Will. lost. Will, Will get, lies. 
Will the Wise. Will gets Will gets pulled into the upside down. Yeah. And nobody can find him. Mm-hmm. Um so you have Will's mother, which is played by an amazing actress. I, we've Will talked about her before, but Winona Ryder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, she, when about, she's not she stealing out. things, she's a really good actress. <laughs> she is the best. Um, she yeah. has she has some of the greatest movies from back in the day. Okay. We talked about we talked about her. We talked about her in the horror podcast, but she's in this as. Will's mother, so she's older, and then you have Hopper, and they're all trying to, f- and they get everybody. Hopper is who? Hopper oh, is the is the sheriff of the town. Okay. So when yeah. Will goes Hopper, missing, Hopper used to live in the town way back in the day. Like he grew up in the town, right? Uh, alongside uh, Will's mom. Yeah. He moved to the city and became a cop. Got married, had a had a kid. Uh, that didn't work out terribly well. He moved back to the small town. And became uh, the sheriff of the small sheriff. town. So, you have Will's mom trying to find Will. You have Will's brother trying to find Will. You have this group of kids who were a, a huge group of friends trying to find Will. And then you end up dis- you end up finding they end up finding Eleven. Eleven tells them about the experiments going on, and then things just escalate from there. I mean, things go crazy after More that. More people disappear. More a couple people, a couple other people disappear. Um, yeah, one the, the thing is, they actually out. they do they do give you a number of people that disappear. The thing is, you don't see all of them disappear. You don't know who all of these people are. Right. Like some of them are just random people right. from around you town. Are, you yeah, do that, see one of them, the one other random person. Yeah, you do. Person. You do. You yeah. see. You see some of them like disappear, the but the rest of them are just random else. people that they're just like, uh, we'll be gone. They're they're right. Basically, there's well, enough. People we're more to, worried. We're worried about Will. So we don't, have enough, to, we don't have to have a bunch yeah. of other. people There's enough things going on to get every group. Going towards the same goal yeah. on their own. Right. Right. See, I think they, 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 I think they literally throw that number out just so you can understand the scale of what's going on. Yeah. Because by the time they throw out that number, you're already invested. And you're already searching for the people that are missing. Right. That are important to our main group. Right. For the right. most part, the entire first season I felt like was just on an episode to find Will and save Will, and yeah. then we'll find out. Yeah. Well, so it's it's a sh- it's a long movie to find Will right. and figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Lots of things. But here, here, this is something that I wanted to point out real quick. I noticed this today. So, if you, as we brought up Renona Ryder, who is amazing, as Will's mom, she is the only one that fights and tries to find him and believes in what he's in once she figures it out. Other than the kids. Other than the kids. And the kids the, 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 are the ones that can trust her and Hopper with this because they know that they believe them. That's pretty much okay. the Just consistent see. theme throughout all three seasons. Yes. Is once everything ties into the full story and all three groups kind of get together, you know it's finale time. Yep. Right, yeah. Because it also like the, the, the first, the first, the first season, yeah, so yeah. everyone has different pieces of information, different evidence right. that can lead them in different directions. Right. And, they, and they have to pursue that to realize that they all, they're all actually pursuing the, the same episode, thing. And then the they, they the second season, then they tell each yeah. other that they're done and everything's fine. And right. then something happens to every single yeah. one of them. And, the, the and then the groups get back together. Well, look, like season season two scene. season two is is mostly like uh, one group thinks something's happening the other groups think that they're being paranoid and something happens to one of the other groups and then they, like they start realizing that something else is happening but they don't see how it connects to you know the first incident and then and then it, it's it's basically the same thing over again but they have to make the excuse of why everyone thinks that it's not related <laughs> right until right. they all realize that it's all related mm-hmm. uh, the, the third the third season. They don't go over that as much. Like basically, as soon as soon as everyone goes, okay, now we know something's happening. Everyone's just everyone's just going. Like right. right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's much more third so, times a so, pattern. So, right. right. So now that we we've gotten to that, I mean, the fourth season is coming out, and the reason why we're doing this before the fourth season is because I like to do 
our discussion of what we thought of the third, the first three, and then mm-hmm. we'll discuss we'll the fourth season when it comes. The fourth season, and we don't Hell know what yeah. it's going to be. I'm they, so they, excited. They've, they've uh, going to ex- dis- into speculation with this one. Um, not yet. We'll get there. Yeah, we we're, we're um on a so moving crawl we are on a very <laughs> slow moving crawl, getting to the end of the first season. So yes. I mean, sorry. So a lot of stuff <laughs> happens in the first season that Joyce does crazy so stuff. Funny. Tries to get contact with him, finds out he's basically in the upside down. You kind of see mm-hmm. Will and, making contact on the is other that side. She doesn't like Let doubt go. it. She yes. believes it. She's all in. She's like, okay, my son is in another dimension. What can I do? Yeah, and she's right. all in, and she's like, right? Because she, 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 she is trying. She is trying to figure out where he is. Because at first, at first, she thinks that. Uh, that he's that he's just gone or lost or ran away or been kidnapped and, or something, right? And well, she doesn't she doesn't really she doesn't really go with the kidnap thing until she gets a phone call. Okay, when she gets a phone call, it's basically just breathing because he's in the upside down. He's trying to communicate through, and the upside down. When I said it was a dead world earlier, right. I mean like it's dead. There's no energy. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's no there's no there's no heat. There's no light. There's like it's like there's no electricity. Yeah. And so. Any 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 energy that comes through has to be brought in from the other side, basically. Right. So you get very faint glimpses into our world via via electricity and energy. In my opinion, I felt like at first when I started watching Stranger Things, which by the way, I'm going to jump around here for a second. Winona Ryder, she did a great job portraying that mom who just wants to find her baby. Yep. I mean, she hit that role spot on. But very I remember that yeah. it started out so slow. I was like, when is this going to get good? And then everything starts to happen, just like you said. It all comes to converging together. I was and then I'll never Will forget when you started like, seeing oh somebody coming through the wall. I was like, whoa. When, when they found out Will really is in the upside down. I mean, it just gets crazier and crazier right. and so crazier. It does, it does have a kind of slow start. The first couple episodes are kind of... And they're but they're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of what a lot of books or storytellers it's, do. It's, 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 it's character it's character the, development, the thing, the thing character is, building, getting into the story. the story, setting up a story. I think, I think and the then up, all the of a sudden ramps for, and goes. I think the setup right. for Stranger Things actually works a lot better than a lot of other other shows set up. Amen. Yes. Because yes. Um, it's it's it, instead of just being slow and you going, all right, let's get into the story. It it shows you a, a a number of characters that you really want to know more about, like who the hell is Eleven and why the hell is is any of this going on with her? Like they they show her they show you her like basically right at the beginning. They tell they tell you where that that she comes from, and you know that that's the same place as this monster thing. You're not exactly sure if she's the monster or not. They they kind of yes. they kind of leave that a little right. ambiguous, yeah. right? Right, right, right. Yes. Um, and then and then the kids find her, and and so you're trying to figure out who the hell she is. So you're at least engaged while right. they're doing all the setup because they leave right. a, they leave enough mystery to keep your mind like what's gonna what's going on who's who's the real bad guy what's going you know right. what's gonna happen so they leave it to where it makes That's you it draws you in aspect. to want to watch the next episode so right. the writers are spectacular I mean oh we I've God. talk I talk about writers a lot so they're and the reason why I do that is because. When a writer is as good as they are, you know, at doing portraying stuff like in Stranger Things or when we talk about Cobra Kai back in a couple podcasts back, like, um, writers are what draw people in. Amen. I mean, the Duffer okay. Brothers. Tyler over here, yeah. Tyler over here is a budding writer. He wants no. to learn to write a novel. He has a novel written. I haven't read it yet. I would like to read it. I'll the the Duffer <laughs> Brothers, who are the creators of the show, are geniuses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it makes you they know. To, go ahead. It makes you harken back to the '80s, which I think for a lot of people, it's it was such a here. simpler and funner time in some ways. Is funner a word? Nostalgic no, era. it's not. Uh, but <laughs> I think I think that it's e- it would be easy for lesser writers to fall into that like nostalgia trap. Because I, I feel like that's a thing that a lot of Hollywood is kind of leaning a little heavy on right and the, now. I think it's when, well, you, when, is, you have to look at your demographic, though. No, no, no. You got I, a lot I, of people. I, I understand that, but the thing is, uh, the nostalgia in Stranger Things isn't just look. It's from the eighties, right? It's, that's it's, right. It's, it's, it's sort of realistic. Like we're going through the eighties. This is this is things that people would actually do, right? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's right. what I mean. Is and, like, and it, it kind of brings me back to kind of at filling the set. It kind of brings me back to to Ready Player One. Which one of the best stuff 
for me in Ready Player One was mm-hmm. the fact that he kept bringing back certain nostalgic things from my past, which right. really drew me in. Right. You know, they talk about Back to the Future and Star Trek and Star Wars and and old video games. Right. They do a lot of the same thing in Stranger Things when they talk yeah, about... Not a lot of 80s nerdy kids. Yeah. Right. Ready Player One the, was actually pretty they good, don't, I thought. They don't really... The they don't book really, is better if you have not read the book, read the book. The thing right. is, they don't. They don't Fantastic. really. They don't really do nostalgia like that in in Stranger Things. Right. Not they go, as big. They go, they go, Not they go as very. Big. They go very light on the nostalgia yes. because they, the, what they what they do is they instead of going, oh look, we're talking about this musical artist. Instead, Jonathan just goes into like his musical taste and like he compares you know his, his style of music to other people's styles of music and why he thinks you know and why he correct. thinks David Bowie right. is better than than the, Kenny well, Rogers. And, and the song is you know, just correct. So it's not like oh look, we're talking about David. Bowie, it's hey, I think David Bowie's better than better than Kenny Rogers. And, that's just and then someone else walks over and goes, Oh, Kenny Rogers, I love Kenny Rogers. Should I stay it's, or should I go? You know that yeah. song? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the song that Jonathan introduces him to. Correct. Yeah, and that's to their keep, right. relationship. Right. And that's, to keep him uh, calm, he sings that song. Again, again though, this is coming from like the producers, directors, and writers that they did a very good job of making sure that they stayed Within that realm, like right. within the eighties stuff, mm-hmm. music, right. um, the background, the vehicles that they use. Yes. Or, um, but in season one, when Eleven is watching TV, the old commercials. The old commercials yeah. from the eighties, absolutely. Like with the Coke and uh, did did she see an Egos commercial and just yes. automatically yeah. fall in love with it? Well, well she. I think no, she, I think she yeah. liked Eggos because well, she, that she liked Eggos because that's the first thing that Mike Mike brings, Mike brings, her. brings oh, to her. Mike right. brings to her was the Ego. That's right. That's and the characters too are just so damn likable. Yeah, I agree. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. Every single one Millie of them is Bobby pretty Brown, likable. Millie Bobby Brown, who plays Eleven, is a genius too. I adore so, her. She's adorable. So, small, She's small tidbit, yeah. small tidbit of information awesome. about Millie Bobby Brown is that she has actually wanted to be a singer before an actress. And really? And I have seen her audition tape. She sings in her audition tape. And I'm going to tell you right now, Go on to YouTube and find anything that has Millie Bobby Brown singing. She can sing, and she loves. Really? She loves oh, yeah. Amy Winehouse. Okay. Oh. So I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know she could sing. I, I oh, knew, she I, can I knew, sing. I knew. I knew that she she had been an actress before Stranger Things because yes. she was yes. in she was in a show called uh, I think it's called The Intruders. Uh, it was a BBC original show where she played an American. I didn't know that she was actually even British until she started yeah, doing Stranger Things. I didn't know I didn't know she was um, British until I saw her first interview and she started talking. I'm like, yeah. that's not your accent. But no, in, in, <laughs> in, 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 in the, in the, the I, first, I first saw her on Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show. But no, she in in, in the in the in, in the Intruders. Wait, you're British? Right. <laughs> she has such a heavy accent too, what? and she hides it so well for a kid her age. But in in the in the Intruders, she was like. Seven or eight in that show, uh, and she plays like a, a sixty-year-old man who body transfers into the into a child. Wow! Uh, and you know how hard that is to do. So she plays it like a sixty-year-old guy who body transfers into a child, and, and and he's on the run from people who know that he can do that, and he's a murderer. <laughs> so she plays a serial killing old man. In the body of a child trying to run away from a group of people who know that he can do that and are trying to kill him. Well, I with mean, an American accent. With an American accent. <laughs> yeah, American with an American accent. accent. Holy crap. What what a number of layers for a child actor to have to deal with. <laughs> right? <laughs> no doubt. That is <laughs> like, and, that, and that's why that's why when I when I saw that she was in Stranger Things, I was like, oh my god, she can really stretch her legs in this show. And I, I was actually kind of disappointed because I was like Man, Eleven doesn't do a whole lot. Like compared to the Intruders, but she, she she's like on vacation. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> until the uh, until the season finale of every uh, of every season, basically. The thing is, she is that out, uses playing her psychic shit, and playing all those it. type of characters that she played in this in this is is a lot harder to do than like people realize. People who you have to do a lot of quiet work. Mm-hmm. Where you have to show emotion with your face. Yep. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to portray things without speaking. I right. mean, that's not easy. Right. And you got you got to do I, you got to do all that all that uh, 
Star Wars Episode Three body acting. You guys, <laughs> I really feel like most That's of these kids playing, okay? and everybody on this TV show, <laughs> we're already seeing it, are going to be some of the biggest name actors in oh, Hollywood someday. It. Oh, I, okay, so, are. so I, I agree with you. Story. I agree with you. Partly, because here's the thing that's gonna happen. The the thing is, is like most child stars, only a few of them will make it beyond this. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with their acting ability. It has to do with with their the drive. It has casserole? to do with the audience. Well, with, yeah. Yeah. and, and yes. if the if the audience can't can't accept them moving <laughs> out of that realm, like <laughs> yeah. I mean, the uh, friggin' what's his name? Uh, uh, he played Frodo in, in, in Lord of the Rings. Elijah Wood. Uh, Elijah, Elijah Wood. Wood. Yeah, yeah. He was a child actor. He was. He was. But the thing is, most people don't remember that he was a child actor because the only thing I can remember that he actually did was The Good Son. So, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, he was. He, he, was so, in, he was in The Good Son with Macaulay so, Culkin. And that's, a, and that's and that's a that's a really that's a really interesting sort of dichotomy. Uh, is, he was he was in a movie with Macaulay Culkin. Elijah Wood makes it to being a, an actual adult actor. Macaulay Culkin <laughs> becomes a crazy person on the internet, who I love. But <laughs> yeah, but he is a crazy person on the internet, and he's the first and, person to admit it. Be, <laughs> and the thing is, is Macaulay Culkin has become a little bit more tame now. But the thing is, is that I was gonna yeah, use, I was gonna yeah. use, yeah, I was gonna a, use. But he, yeah, he's, he's a crazy internet. Person. He's married to some hot chick too, and I don't even remember. Yeah, I, what's what's the, what's the name of his website? Like Bunny Ears or something? But anyway, so uh, I was yeah, gonna yeah, use Macaulay yeah, Culkin. Tame. I was gonna use Macaulay Culkin as an example because. Everybody knows Macaulay Culkin from the Home Alone movies. And right. He, and, if and you he, can't picture him out... Movie too. Oh, he was in the That's movie. the good son that we were just talking about a second Macaulay ago. Macaulay yes. Culkin has done a lot of very diverse Richie work. Richie Rich. Uh, but the thing Richie is, Richie it was so Richie hard... Oh, okay. It was so hard yeah. for a lot of us to see him outside of the Home Alone... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. Genre. He, genre. He genre. But he, he, did, he did a lot of very diverse work. It's just... Audiences weren't really accepting of him moving out of that space. Right. Which now Millie Bobby Brown will probably will probably break out of that. She'll, she'll probably I think do Millie okay. Bobby I Brown will. I oh, think yeah. Millie Bobby Brown will do something in movies and TV yeah. shows oh, beyond Finn, this. Right. Finn, yeah. Finn Wolfhart might make he, it out. He might. Finn Wolfhart. And then let me uh, the other before. child actor Who's that Finn I think Wolfhart? of all he's, the time Mike. is Mike. is okay. the guy who played kid who played Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe. It's hard to picture Radcliffe outside of the Harry Potter realm. And he, right. and he, and he has shown his penis in a lot of plays. <laughs> and yes, people yes. still only see him as Harry Potter. Yes. And, and he's and still the thing. Like, oh, the but, Harry Potter. He, but, he played a corpse <laughs> but it's not for Daniel two and a half but hours there in There was movie. one actress that came Ooh, out of God. the Harry Potter that has done beyond, and we can oh. see her. Emma Watson. Is Emma Watson. Yep. She was, she, the, she um, was one of those characters that right, she, we can see her as a character outside yeah, so, of Harry so Potter. The, like, on, honestly, female child actors tend to do better with the transition. Right. True. And, and it really doesn't have a whole lot to do unless, with, with acting ability. Like I said, it has to do with, with the audience acceptance of, of their transition. Right. And then yeah. they're just and then right. they get cast with well, the one of the other things that happens is that well, what do they call when you could just get cast in the type same cast. type of role? Type, type, yeah. type cast. Yeah. Type cast. Like, like I hope that doesn't be, happen. I feel like they're they kind of doing that with Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, here's another fact too. Him. But also, like I see some of the actors in there. Like I don't know, was Hop the guy who played Hopper? Was he in, in any other? Yeah. He was a bunch of yeah, other he's stuff. He's been in other he's things. Been... He played the he played Hellboy in the newest reboot of Hellboy. He's gonna be and one of the was... characters in uh, the new uh, Black Widow movie. Oh, I think, yes. I think, I think he, oh, is he, he the dad? Mostly, yeah, I think he mostly yeah. did plays. Oh, and stuff he, before. he's I'm so pretty talented. Weirdly enough, I'm pretty sure he was he was like a Broadway actor before before Stranger Things. Is that David Harbor was on a show. It's, I don't know how well you guys know this, but he was on an Aaron Sorkin show on HBO called The Newsroom. He was one of those, he was one of the anchors it. on that was show. Was he really? Yeah, yes. Yeah. He was on. He oh, he played, he played Oscar he, the Grouch in, uh, in The Grouch. Yes! yes! The Saturday Night Live Did he really? <laughs> no. The Saturday Night Live skit. Saturday that was hilarious. Night Live it was a parody of The Joker. It yeah, was it, hilarious. It, it, that's funny. It, it was hilarious. It, 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 it makes, it makes, uh, Gritty, realistic Sesame Street. And, oh my god! So, and, he, and he plays Oscar the Grouch. He, he starts off as a as a oh. as a trash man, 
and it goes over his his slow methodical transformation it's into the grouch. <laughs> so now I got to do my job and rel- and, and rein us all in. Yeah. So my bad. we my bad. went off on our tangent, but again, that is what we do. Sorry. <laughs> welcome to so, the end. Of the don't sorry. be sorry, sorry. listeners. Don't be sorry. That's we, what we do. It welcome happens. to the show. You so should welcome the to the tangent. Anyway, I've been on this show now three times. Now so that we're done with the intro, we can move into the main body. So going back to Stranger Things and then the show itself. So Our bed. <laughs> we're going to push to so, the end of season one and yeah. kind of get moving. So season one, a lot of stuff happens where she she's able to find her son, um, realizes he's in the upside down. They find ways to that they have to go in. They cook him. To get out. They have to. They, with no energy? they use... They use heat to destroy the gem- yes. demigorgon. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that happen. Again, I'm I'm okay with giving away spoilers, but at the same time, oh, oh, oh. there are some people out in the world that are not a big spoiler fan. Right. Yeah, Tim and I, Tim, yeah. and Tyler, and I, we've all discussed this before because if you can't get through spoilers, then the it's movie spoilers. or show is season, not good enough one, to watch. Right. Yeah. Season, season one doesn't does have a, any rewatch value. There's a lot, of, a, yes. a, lot, a lot of setup for like the rules of the Upside Down and the rules of um, you know, uh, like the Demigorgon and, and beings that exist in, in, that, in that world. So like some of it's kind of weird and like, uh, like sort of like Shady, like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at first, or or they're just sort of like flying by the seat of their pants, right? Um, so like in season one, they set the demigorgon on fire when uh, the teenagers do, uh, while they're trying to fight it, and it ends up it ends up leaving. And you're not really sure if you go back and look at that scene in the first season whether or not the fire actually hurt it or helped it, because you know it, it's you eventually figure out that right. it, it hurt it, yeah, right. Um, but you don't really realize that in season in season one because it seems really no worse for wear when it goes and fights the soldiers in the hospital, uh, or I'm sorry, in the in the in the school. Okay. Um, like, hmm. so it, it it and it's it's one of those things where I saw a lot of theories about it after season one and people right. were were trying to figure out, um, you know, did the fire hurt it or help it? Because it comes from a world with no energy, and it seems to be drawn to things that are energyful. Right. And fire is energy. Is, well, is, is it so cascading? So exothermic reaction, right? Is it? Is it? Did it absorb? You know the energy from the fire and like assist itself in some way, which is why it was like largely well, immune to the machine gun and fire. Also, it's, it's attracted <laughs> to blood. And oh, damn. It's thing fell over. <laughs> it's attracted to blood, so. Yeah. In well, that's mostly because it eats things. That, that, that too, yeah. Is so it the first gonna... season the one where the thing started out as a tiny little pet? No, that, no. That's season no, two. No, no. So we're not there that's, yet. That's Digna. Okay, so <laughs> to move past season one, they end up finding Will. Will is almost dead. They end up bringing, getting him back, and, and like, they think that they closed the entrance to the Upside Down. Okay. Am I right about yes. that? Yes. Uh, they, well, no. They they think they they think they mostly close it. They know it's open because the new government people that come in admit that it is open and they they can't close it, which is the reason why they tell them that you know they sit there with a flamethrower every week and just like blah. blah, blah. Oh, that's right. Because that's that's, that's when you actually right, figure out the right. fire hurts well, it. Okay. Season yeah. two government. Okay. Um, okay so but, moving into season two. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> you meet. Up with the same group of kids, um, and you know it's Halloween the very next year. Am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah. This season two is or season one is what like uh, it's around. They're all kind of around like a certain holiday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the first the first season's around. I want to say it's around Fourth of July. I think so. That's no, that's season, season. That's season three. That's okay, season three. so Fourth right. of July. I knew there was one of those. Um, season, season one. Season one. Actually, I don't think it's near a holiday. Yeah, I, don't I think, think it, it might. It might be close to well, Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. Well, it, at the end. Because the, because at the end they, 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 they like they jump ahead a few months and right. it's Christmas. Christmas. Well, at, right, yes, right, it's Christmas right. at the end. So of the it day. might okay. it might be Thanksgiving or it might be like in August. So like the second season is based in October, so it's around around Halloween. 
Some of us in this room like Halloween better than others. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Nick's not the only one because I love Halloween. He likes Halloween. Uh, he likes the Halloween. only thing. You should have seen our house in stopping Halloween. Christmas from absorb absorbing the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Right. Pretty much. Oh, you should have seen our house. In so Halloween. this is this is a little nod to to Huck over here, but. The four kids dress up as Ghostbusters because yeah. that's the yes. year Ghostbusters was released. It was in '83. Amen to that. Yes. And um, I think that's that's what I'm talking about when I, when, I, when we were talking about nostalgia don't they all earlier. Show up yeah. Is, try to be Bankman or something. Yeah, they are. <laughs> too old. Nobody, like too, nobody wants to be Winston. <laughs> <laughs> but they well, like Winston. But there's no, one no, little there's black there's boy in there. You should have been Winston. <laughs> but no, well, no. Don't you typecast him like that? No, no, no. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! They give Winston way too much crap in that show. Okay? They do. They, they give do. Winston way too much they crap. Do. He is one of the funniest damn guys. He in is that movie. absolutely. And I'm going to tell you right Amen. now, he yeah. is one of the only normal people, non scientists, that could walk into a into a group that are scientists types like they were, Amen. and actually fit in so, and do so, the job. So, so right. Seriously, exactly. <laughs> like if there's a steady paycheck involved. Like, whatever right. They need. Right. <laughs> Ray, Ray, Ray is way too way too obsessed. Venkman. Like barely knows what the hell he's even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, just just so we can get past this part, we will do a Ghostbusters podcast Yay! in the future. So okay. we right will not list. include Huck because he sucks at Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, he hates Ghostbusters. Yeah. Sorry, that was a joke, people, because Huck will probably be here just for Ghostbusters. Just have me do it. <laughs> um, so we'll Huck, get past Huck the is, Ghostbusters stuff. Huck and is go basically back Ray. He's two. way too obsessed. We'll go past the Ghostbusters and get. Right into season two. Amen. So, uh, who is it that Dustin find, finds that little mm-hmm. yes. lizard thing? Like yes. a baby didn't find D'Artagnan? D'Artagnan. Dustin is, what he is my favorite ever. It, it, basically, when they him. what they establish as the Demigorgon, it's like a baby version of that. It's a demo dog. It's a, yeah, a demo dog is, <laughs> is kind of really? how they. Demo dog is how they I, end up describing it later. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because ba- basically, it it it, 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 start, it starts off as like like a little a slug, dog. right? It's right? the larva form, yes. right? Yes. And then it it grows it grows and grows and grows, and eventually it eventually kind of looks like a dog. It eats right. a cat. Oh, but and, they, they, and, it, and it eats a cat. cat. But they name it. But he <laughs> names it Dig as Dug, often, as dogs often do. Right. <laughs> Dustin names it Dig Dug after his favorite arcade game. He he name, he, no, he names it D'Artagnan because it likes it likes too much material. I thought it was Dig Dug. No, he, he no he he named he named it D'Artagnan because the okay. first thing he fed it was a Three Musketeers. Oh, that's right, that's right. You're right, you're right. You're right. And I don't know how many of you have read Alexander Dumas, but uh, the, is the if you don't know who D'Artagnan is, shut up. Hey, no, not true. He's, if you don't yeah, know who D'Artagnan is, get some culture. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's the fourth go, Musketeer. Go, go eat a Three Musketeers. <laughs> And think about the legacy of that candy bar. No, go eat a Three Musketeers, read The Man in the Iron Mask, and realize that's not the story that D'Artagnan's important in. Anyway. <laughs> so, if we, die, if we must die, let it be like this. So season two is where I get a little fuzzy about stuff. Because for me, like I said, I burned through the yeah, first couple seasons in a matter of days. You right. were behind, so you just watched. So like, I burned through seasons. them. So that's a lot, of it, a lot of it is like... A lot of it is giant blur. Yeah, season two is kind of See, season, season two. Is season two is a little, theater. a little, a little wonky because a lot of things are happening well, at the like, same time. Season two is where you get introduced to Max. Yes, and, and her Billy. brother. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And Mac, Max and her older brother, the Red Ranger. That's right. No, that's right. Wait, hold um, on. What? The the new teen, uh, the new uh, My Order Power Rangers movie, the Red Ranger. That's that's. Uh, Max's older brother. Billy is a Red Ranger. Isn't it the Billy is the Blue Ranger? Is no, no, no. The, Billy is oh, the Billy name, the name of his character in, yeah. in Stranger Things. Well, so yes. yes, Billy <laughs> Billy is Jason, who is the Red Ranger. <laughs> he's also is but he's also a racist yes. with a mullet. So <laughs> a racist with a mullet, right? Anyway, isn't the Mind Flayer the bad guy of season two? The mind the Mind Flayer is the bad guy of season two, which okay. me and, me and Tyler kind of discussed this earlier. Yes. The thing is, if they wanted to really make a, a lot of the these D and D comparisons work, what they should have done is they should have named the Demigorgon from season one. They should have named that the Mind Flayer or an Illithid. 
And they should have called the bad guy from season two an elder brain. And then they could have called, you know, all the D'Artagnans, you know, all the little, the little demo dogs. They could have called them intellect devourers intellect or something. Yeah. No more that, intellect devourers. That, but that, the thing <laughs> is, that, that, that analogy, like, works one yes. for one. But yes. instead, we have the Demigorgon, which is a, a prince of hell, yes. versus a, a mind flare who controls it. But a mind flare is literally just like a grunt from the edge of the universe. Yeah, it's just an aberration. <laughs> right. Like, it, it's not especially powerful so other than the fact that it's choices from space. For they, they, made, they made poor choices, but the thing is, I can understand why they made those poor choices. Cause yeah, Because I don't think they had intended to make quite this accurate of an analogy when they started. Right. It, I... Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's what they were, what they were going for. And so the thing is, it's not, it's, not to mention, this is gonna be one of our it's very possible that they ever. didn't know that they <laughs> no, were going to get really. a second season really when not. they were writing the first season, and, that, and that's, and that's season true two. too. Like I, I, I think, I think they, like, they thought they might have had a good chance of getting a season two, right. but they might not have. They, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure if they have like um, a show outline. Yeah, you know, they're, like, right. it kind of seems like they're going with like it. Se- it seems like it seems like they're just sort of next. like going season by season. Yeah, yes. What seems yeah. logically to come next? Like it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going in depth like Cobra Kai, where they have like a well, a they show have an outline, outline for, for what six or seven seasons yeah. for Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai has a show outline like for seven seasons. Oh, I love Cobra Kai. Uh, yeah. Cobra Kai. Uh, yeah. We've already yeah, discussed Cobra that, Kai. I know. I listened to. Did that? Or. Or like the Magnus Archives that has a, a show outline for five seasons. Anyway. Anyway. So um, I need a little help pushing season two along. Oh. So um, they end up having to fight this Mind Flare, which is again... They kind of fight it. Yeah. They don't actually go in and fight it. What, what, what ends up happening is it ends up making a bunch of the demo dogs and they're having to try and figure out what to do with those... Before this, like army of demo dogs becomes an army well, of demogorgons. And they which also one 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 demogorgon was a bad news in the first season. The mind flare right. also kind of makes people but, sick and stuff. Yeah, and but the, the, the mind the mind like, the mind flare yes. jumps into Billy. Will. Yes. Yeah, no, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't jump right, into, he doesn't right, jump into right. Billy in season two. He jumps into Billy in season three. But in season that's two, right. he jumps into Will. Yes, yep, that's right. Sorry. Uh, so basically, the guy who the the kid who plays Will. For the first two seasons, doesn't have to do a lot. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. He's he just, he just the, basically has to look scared and then the, confused, the poor, and that's basically and all he has to do for two kids. seasons. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish I had that job. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you don't uh, have a childlike face enough to right. But well. season season three, he actually has like go and act, and he does a pretty good job. Um, yeah, because he's all like, man, I just want to play D and D. Yes. Yeah. They make, they yeah, make nobody else is because I don't want to have a girlfriend. Well, they, they make big illusions to everybody either else. gay or asexual. Well, everybody yeah. else gets somebody. But I think, so the thing is, like, I, think, I think it's more accurate to say that he's fourteen. Well, and also the, and, the thing yeah, that we kind of yeah, jumped over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he's people are interested nerd. in what they're interested in. You he's a fourteen-year-old well, well, eighties nerd, like, like, No, we were not Yeah, we're getting we're getting back to Bob. We'll get to Bob. The thing that uh, the, the thing that we kind of skipped over a little bit was that Mike and Eleven form a relationship. True, and then and they well, they, they technically form a relationship in season one. Yes, right. but um, it gets but Mike doesn't but Mike doesn't get to fulfill that relationship with her until the at the end of season two. And it's it's mostly because great. she explodes. Yes. Also, oh, one fun. important thing. Yeah, Mike is a spoiler. Like you do. Hopper takes in Eleven and has to struggle with the... After the explosion. After the end of the first season with trying to raise Eleven. And you really learn a lot more about Hopper. Yeah, and, that's, that's And the dynamic Hopper between those two, between a, fa- a child with psychic abilities and a boyfriend. Like, you get to see... Yeah, yeah so the, 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 the thing about like this, highly, highly protective uh, law enforcement dad... And daughter who who was only recently discovered that like people outside of like the facility she lived in for the first like ten years of her life or some some such nonsense Can like we twelve years of her life. Why My Hopper though? You know, was so and protected. shut up! I'm explaining things. Um, <laughs> and and she she gets out. She has psychic powers and she likes this boy, right? And I, and I she, for disaster and right. its own sitcom. So so, yes. so so overprotective dad. Has to deal with her, his psychic daughter and the boy that she likes. Yes. 
It's quite hilarious. Well, not, but not only that, good but the, the boy that she likes is also like a pseudo hero because he was he was the leader of the group of kids that helped destroy the Demogorgon. Yeah. So, so like so objecting gets, to the relationship so is not really, really on the plate but here. The conversation <laughs> right. that they have in the car. Hopper and Mike, that they have an, oh my god, it's hilarious. Yeah, they have to, like, break up. <laughs> hey, hey, make sure my daughter doesn't explode again. That'd be great. It's kind of something <laughs> like that, but it's more, it's, it's more It's more of the, like, stay away from. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like awesome. one step below, like, cleaning the shotgun at the kitchen table. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. Hopper right. being Hopper. That's all I can say. And anybody that knows smoke the show in his knows face, what I'm like, talking about. It's fucking hilarious. Very, very 80s. Boys. Very yes. traditional dad boyfriend dynamic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So true. then we also meet uh, one of my favorite characters, only because the actor that plays him was amazing as Bob. Yes. Right. Uh, no, that character was just amazing. Yeah, Dude. Bob as a character yes. was really yes. good. Sean no, here's, here's, here's the thing. Fucking rock. Here's the thing. <laughs> when they when they introduced Bob, I thought they were gonna go down a very specific stereotypical sort of. Like really bad direction, right? And they were they were just, they were just going to do man bad because right. he's, he's dating Joyce and you know he's 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 you know uh, sort of, here's you're not my real dad. Right. He's, 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 he's basically he's basically like a pseudo stepfather for like Jonathan and and Will. But the thing is, he accepts Jonathan and how you know he's like, hey, you're older, you know, you don't really need me in your life, you know, if you just want to be buds or whatever, or you just want to talk sometime or. You know, if you, you need anyone other other than your mom, you know, but other than that, you know, we you and me, we can take care of your mom together and and, and then like with Will he's just like, Hey, you know, you need someone in your life and, and things and he goes, he's very he's very encouraging and he's yeah. he's a super nerd. And like he, 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 work, he works he works at Radio Shack, which is the nerdiest thing you can do in the <laughs> right, exactly. He exactly. Yeah. with the kids for right. that too, because doesn't they he love tell radio. Will and a story that seems kinda like he met the clown it well, too? Yeah, he it, 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 he does. A monster uh, he, 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 like, was he, he, he basically tells him he, he tells him a story about how to be brave uh, in the face of oh, and the thing is what what's funny is Bob is at, all at the same time a good guy and his story makes Will do the wrong thing. Interesting. Well, I never so, noticed this because when Will goes and tries to confront the mind flare, it gives the mind flare the exact opportunity it needs to jump into him. Yeah. So it was the exact wrong. It was the exact right lesson for the exact wrong at the exact wrong time. Right. right. Yeah. So he's giving him the right the right advice brave, as as an adult would give. So, man, so he sounds like a man dude. trying to do his best. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And he's the thing very, is, I thought I thought for sure when it, when it came to that that scene where he he lets he lets them borrow his his new video his new his new VHS video recorder right um, to go on their on their trick Halloween or treating for Halloween movies, yes. right and. Uh, they end up dropping the, the 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 video recorder because Will had it and he had a, a panic attack and right. uh, stuff like that because uh, he was being picked on by some older kids. Okay. Well, um, the next day, Bob's talking to it, talking to, to Joyce about it, and I thought he was going to go into like you know, oh man, we're going to go into like man bad territory where he's going to be like, they dropped my video recorder, and no, he he goes. He goes, yeah, it, it's fine. No, but I just, I, I wanted to let you know that he was being picked on by, by these other kids, and, and uh, he like shows her the tape and, and to like, you know, like get, get her an idea of, like who these kids are, and he like makes no qualm about the fact that you know is which is probably a very expensive, piece very of expensive equipment. piece of kit oh, yeah, at the time, then, yeah. right? Yeah. That's like a smartphone. Back and and yeah. the thing is, like, I was like, right. man, this dude is just like the nicest dude, right? And then he <laughs> helps them. Build a map out of just nonsense. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's true. I, I remember seeing memes about this. Yeah, yes. yeah they, they make like the the the, un, the upside down with coloring pages. Yes, that's right. Yeah, they, 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 they they just assemble this random thing out of nonsense, and they're just like, Bob, can you figure this out? And he's like, How am I supposed to figure? It? Actually, yeah, that's a lake. And <laughs> <laughs> right, that's yeah. A lake. He was able to decipher what Will was coloring. Right. So he he, he basically pages. he builds them a map and tells them where to go and they go and save Hopper. So he's 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 fighting bullies and giving encouraging talks and he's saving the cops and you know, like, Bob is a great character. Yeah, and like the thing is is like yeah, at any point And in he time, has no idea he's doing most of this. <laughs> like, <laughs> at any point in time he could have been the typical a-hole 
you know, evil stepfather. But, but no, dude, he was, Aston, so the, right. was a different face. He he mind, he, so. he just showed he just great. showed what just what a, a stepdad or or what a stepdad could be. What you know what a a good stepdad everybody would want to have mm-hmm. if they had a stepdad. What kind of person right. they would want and. The thing is, is that again, the actor who played him, you almost can't portray him as anything but this awesome dude because he was Samwise Gamgee's in freaking Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, speaking, speaking, he was speaking of Elijah Rudy. Wood, we, yeah. we, got, we got Samwise in the show. I forgot. So um, he Rudy, was Rudy, the brother. Which I, I, I actually Rudy, know. That's right. I, I, I legitimately forgot that he played Samwise. Did but, anybody else feel like at the very end of the episode because of all the government stuff that was going on in the town that Bob was like a secret agent for one minute? Like I, I kept that, that he might he might have actually been trained and like got got like sort of like put on Joyce. Right. There was that, a lot the, of things going on. I, I didn't mind think that. Hurt. But the thing is, if someone had come up with that theory, I would have entertained it because it's almost believable. Right. Mm-hmm. To keep an eye on the kid. I mean, it makes. Perfect but the thing sense. is, a, a secret a secret agent wouldn't forget their gun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, that like, that depends on how like, deep undercover they are and how bad they no, are. And that depends so on there, how there, much there, come, there comes a point where, where Bob's sneaking around a place and there's a bunch of danger going on. So Hopper actually gives him a gun, and he goes and he does the thing and he leaves the gun. On the console of where he was, mm. because he's just a dude that works at Radio Shack, and they like and they like do like a hard them. linger on this gun on the console. They're just like, it's still here, and <laughs> right. right, well done. So, without doing too much of a big synopsis on this stuff, I mean, our podcast is going to run a little long if we tried to run a full synopsis on season two and season three before this pod is over um they end up again they have to fight the mind flayer they have to try to figure out how to close the gate they got to figure out in the the third season the mind flayer attempts to manifest in the regular world Mm -hmm. yes Um, so they still couldn't find a way to close the the hole mm -hmm. a big old rift um, and then in season three comes well, around. No, because the, they did close the rift in the second season. The reason why they're having issues is because of the Russians. The Russians. And the, the Russians, Russians come the to Russians town. Come. No, so the back to the Soviet two, Union and the communists. The communists. In the end of season and, and two, oh, oh. Eleven closes the portal with her mind because she's badass. Yeah, yeah she was. Oh, yes. that's right. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the the Russians come to town so and the Russians... Uh, are building uh, a gate in Russia, and they also come, but they, it doesn't work out terribly well. Okay. So they come to the only place where they know that a gate's come up because they have spies and things and measuring right. utensils. It's the, uh, so they, they measuring they, utensils. Yeah, measuring utensils. <laughs> um, but they, they they end up coming they end up coming to the same town that they're all in, and they use a front to build a mall. Everybody's favorite hangout place. Yeah, everyone's favorite hangout place because it's the eighties and it's a mall. It's the town's first mall. Right. So they they use a they use a bunch of fronts to build a mall, and then under the mall they build a giant secret underground facility for secret communist that, things. Right. That only doesn't, um, that and it doesn't sounds see, very red. Dustin and Steve and the chick from it the is, ice cream shop. Yes! <laughs> it is yes! very. And at this point, you're getting introduced to a little bit more of like. Side characters because oh, you got more nice. family getting involved yeah. from the main characters. Okay, um, you know, Cassie's like the kids famous. are growing no, up. They're I can't, probably I can't remember, I can't remember her close name. To that, their that freshman year, skewed. she's she's someone's daughter. Someone someone famous. Someone famous. Someone's daughter. famous. Someone, <laughs> yeah, one, one of those famous people. One of them famous people. I think I, 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 think, I think he might be a singer of songs. Um, <laughs> not hundred percent on that. Not hundred percent on that at all. Um, Somebody who works in Hollywood. So, someone who works in the industry. Don't ask me what industry. It's not Maya. Important. That's the name of her character. Oh no, Robin. Excuse me. Robin's Robin. the name oh, of yeah, her character. Robin. I forgot. Well, about what Robin. is the actress's name? Maya Hawk. Ethan Hawk's daughter. Oh, oh really? Right. Isn't Ethan Hawk like a pedo now or something? Anyway. Um, <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> it depends on when he did it, I guess. 
<laughs> how long he's been on or whatever. I don't know. You just said now, like yes, as soon as this moment Get happened. Get back on track here. I, I'm gonna need a calendar. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's figure it out. So the 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 Russians build a, a new big machine thing and start trying to open up a gate under under the mall. Oh, excuse me. Um, they succeed, and that's how to the do mind communism f- on the to do under, to yeah. do communism <laughs> on the oh, outside. Um, yeah. so, yeah. no, it it, it, make, it makes sense in in the in the context of the show because I think I think uh, what they what they they essentially figure out is they want to try and make the demigorgons super soldiers for them. More or less. Okay. And they know that having the gates open uh, in America is more disturbing for America because then the things can just come through. Right. And yeah. just start tearing things up. Because it already has created problems. Right. It's already right. created problems. It, it causes disturbances. It's really hard to deal with. You know, basically, it's just it's just an easy... It's, it's an easier way to make an I win button. Right. You know? Yeah. So... So chaos in your enemy's ranks and... Exactly. Um, so they, they start opening up this gate and then the mind flayer comes through and then, and then Billy slash Jason from, from the Power Rangers, (laughs) (laughs) the Red Ranger with a mullet. And also racist. But yeah. he has a sweet love car. The mullet. Love the mullet and love yes. the car. It's the eighties. Yes. Everybody's racist. <laughs> Everybody loves to hate Billy. But no, but the thing the thing is that actually I didn't didn't hate a very Billy. good heel. I, I felt good. sorry for Billy. I didn't very here's, good here's the thing. Here's the thing. The thing the thing about about He's Billy very good dick to me that you finally get like is, right. I'm not I'm not sure exactly how everyone got racist because the first time I saw all those scenes like the first time I saw season two and and. I, I started looking into things He's like people's like theories and stuff about you know yes. about season two and going into season three and everyone was like and Billy's racist and I'm just like where when what well, happened it's because, it's no, because, no, it's because. but I, I started I started looking back at it and it's specifically because of what he says about about Lucas and then I started thinking about what he exactly he says about Lucas mm-hmm. and it's not much what did he say. Uh, he, he, he basically, he basically tells Max to stay away from him. Oh, that's right! But the thing is, the first time he tells Max to stay away from him, that is literally the first human that, that Billy thinks that Max has talked to. Yes! So, the, what I got out of it was, don't get in touch with all these normies from this small town. Right. Because we're better than them and we come from, we come from California. That's That's what I got out of it. Right. 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 I didn't get racist from the I didn't get, I didn't get racist racist from it initially. But if you look at it, if you look at it without that, without those eyes, if you look at it without the eyes of us, like in this group, because as a group, we don't see that as racism. But because the thing, in my in my head, if if you had replaced Lucas with Dustin, Billy would have reacted the exact, the exact same, same way. Exactly, right. possibly. That's, that's but what the I thought thing it was. Is, again, again, it's about it's, the views of the people um, at large. So the consumer Lucas is black, by the way. I don't think we ever went over yes. that. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. the thing is, is like yeah, at large, in, uh, Ghost at Ghost large, Ghost we see that. it. We want to see it as a as a non racial <laughs> thing. Yeah. But a lot of other people won't see it that way. They I, see it as the, the racial thing. And the thing, thing. is, right. the, way, the way I was thinking about it, it's not like it's any less dickish. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's like, a I, mean, huge I feel like if that's what they were sure. going, if that's what the writers were going for, they probably wouldn't have racist. picked a different Amen. Thing. And you can be re- well, maybe not. Maybe? <laughs> but the thing is, I think, I think the only reason maybe why they went with, with, with Lucas is because no, Lucas and Dustin were sort of having a competition to see who was going to get together with Max. And they okay. knew that Lucas was going to win that competition and get together with Max, which he does. Okay. And so they just they just went with the person who was eventually going to get together with Max. Right. Okay. Okay. And the thing is, I once once I started thinking about it and, and started getting into okay, maybe he's maybe he's racist. Maybe we can do something with this storyline. And they don't. Yeah. Season three is completely devoid of the fact, of, quote unquote, fact that Billy is a racist. Maybe and they, he he like they, they he doesn't he doesn't deal with it he doesn't get over it he doesn't talk about it he doesn't even he doesn't even act on it he 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 associates with 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 no person of a different race to even let you know whether or not it's true that he's racist right again, well, maybe, so man, maybe it's one of those things that they were thinking about bringing up and just decided to just again or though maybe but the thing is the they give him a redemption it. arc. It just has nothing to do with being racist. Again, though, the thing is, is that what happened is in the eye of the beholder. So we see it in one way. 
Right. That doesn't mean that everybody else is going to see it in that way because there are people out there that want to see racism, so they see racism. But it's, I, I guess I, I guess don't perhaps, see it. Like I, I think perhaps they, they, if there was a complaint think, okay. about it, in there, the there's, some, there's season, something that, that you that you said there's a little earlier, Tyler. They, they, just, they, if okay, they wanted it to not be racist, they would have used a different character. Right. Yeah. So so I don't know. There was a lot of talking there, but there was. Devin made a good point. It's like maybe because of the 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 fact that it was shown in the first season, complaints were made, and maybe in the third yeah, season they made a better conscious effort of. Not that. showing it again. Yeah, that's kind of right. what I was touching on. Is like maybe they wanted to do this storyline, but like maybe Besides somebody told them no. From it. Right. But the thing is, I, I don't see I don't see why they would have gone a different direction if that was their aim. Because doing a racism mostly comes from ignorance, and and you can get over it as you if you actually know a black person. Right, right. is a great art to do. It's 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 not only it's not only a, a pretty good lesson. It's mostly true. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like, like but, Daryl Daryl Davis showed that in real life. Like, yeah. He, but, he has he has what two hundred clan hoods in his in his freaking closet, and he's a black blues singer, and like he he's he's gotten all kinds of random racists to stop being racist just by showing up and, and like giving high fives and shit. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah Daryl Davis. Yeah. He's, he's a he's a, a black blues singer, and he he spent like the last like fifteen or twenty years going around to like KKK meetings. And just talking to people, yes. right? And yes. like he, he has like he has uh, he has like the full the full ensemble of like a um, a uh, an, an what was it an exalted cyclops? Yes, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like like the, I, I can't really put the the ranks of the KKK together in my head because they don't make any sense. But well, like, you're not a white it's just and, and, no and again problem. and again without us being you know we are not right. Racist. Members of the like, KKK. I, I, look, don't get me wrong. I I want to be a dragon and you know a wizard and all sorts of things too. But you know what? It's just really not worth the price. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> it's price of I can just call myself. A I, I want to be a that? wizard dragon. That would be spectacular. Really? Right. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't want to be a grand wizard, exalted cyclops, dragon, something there. I don't know. I think there's like the color green in there somewhere. Look, but, the color green. I'm not a wizard. Really? I'm not even joking right. about that. <laughs> that sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> the green brand wizard exalted cyclops dragon. Yeah. I don't wow. think that reference. But no, like, okay. I think I think that would have been that would have been a really a really neat story to put together for an actual really good redemption arc for Billy in season three. Potentially, but they gave yes, him one anyways. Redemption for being a dick. The concept of racism. Redemption is for trying to sleep with so, Mike's mom. So, okay, so another like, rain. Just make you want I gotta to do show. my job again. I'm intrigued. I gotta do my job uh, again, and we're gonna rein this tangent yeah. in. My bad. Because it went to some place that didn't need to go. <laughs> so, where was that? We see the racism is not something I really want to talk about on this podcast. For okay, it, was, it, was, it was a thing in the show, though. It's and I only it. want to say that because our one token is not here. Anyway. <laughs> we're Asian. <laughs> I'm a token at my new job. <laughs> oh my so God. Harrison Look, is okay. not here. Okay. You're, you're less white okay. than Sean, so it's you're fine. <laughs> but he's the ginger. I'm the white kid. But Harrison gave Ryan's me, white too. Minute, hold on. Anyways, I think I've named all the Harrison, white people at night shift. <laughs> did, did Harrison give you both permission to use the word? Yeah, but he doesn't need to. You want to know why? Because most people just call us yellow. Hello? <laughs> Anyways. The color grading doesn't make sense. All right? <laughs> Native I'm Americans not gonna, are red. I'm not going to make excuses for racists, but I'm like their color chart is wrong. Wait, did Harrison, <laughs> okay? like, did Harrison give you guys permission to use the N word, or who did he give? Yeah, he gave us an N pass, but I still couldn't use it. Really? Right. When did that happen? That happened oh, in the one of the podcasts. podcasts. One of the music podcasts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I still so, can never use that word. So the anyway. racist man no, with I a mullet not. tells no. t- tells his sister not to date the black kid. Uh, stepsister. But that yeah. was season okay. two still, anyways. That okay. was season two still, yeah. And then, so, and then she dates the black kid. Yes, much to his chagrin. Well, no, season because three, he, he ends up he ends up sort of pseudo accepting it at the at the end of season two because they threaten to uh, they threaten to skewer his testicles. Oh, um, that's yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> James. Okay. <laughs> now yeah. there, there's a lot to that. <laughs> Um, so Steve, being Steve, 
he's he's the big bad you know sort of popular guy in town, right? Right. In in season one, he gets Hot beaten up. He, guy yeah, he gets he gets he gets bad. beaten up by Jonathan in season one, oh, and people start thinking that he's less cool. But he's still the cool guy. Then Billy comes into town and starts showing him up like on the basketball court and like stealing all of his friends and. Like stealing all of his ex friends and oh, oh so, so so eighties high school movie type stuff yeah right yeah. except hot mullet guy except he really doesn't care <laughs> like, <laughs> like so and that and that's and that's, one, yeah. that's one of the reasons why I think Steve is so great is like he's a good kid. like by the end of season yes, one he, he doesn't really care does anymore you. like he he, he, tr- he tries to make amends with like all the people that he screwed over at, at the and end of season know, one you know season he's... two. Billy's trying to screw with them and like steal all of his like, you know, great high school okay, cred or whatever. And Steve, and Steve's just like, whatever, guy. I'm trying <laughs> to take a shower. <laughs> we haven't something. talked about the relationship Love that. with Steve and we're missing something Nancy, about mind. how Billy tried to f Nancy's mom. <laughs> Isn't that season three though? I said Mike's mom, but yeah, Mike's mom, same lady, and, and Nancy's mom, and Nancy's mom. I almost said Stacey's mom. Isn't that season for three? Reason. Stacy's mom, mom has got to go. Going on. Okay, no uh, singing. Sorry. <laughs> this isn't the music podcast. This is the Stranger Things podcast. Oh, about okay. James, you just got a DMC takedown. <laughs> what? Because we were singing. Be, because the music industry is run like a mafia. What? <laughs> take hey, you see, okay. you see you got some music. Uh, when you yeah. make sense, then you can talk. Anyway. He's shaped. <laughs> Put the music in the big. Put the music in the big. In the big. In the big. Anyways. Any less. So. Our bad. So. He seems so, so, to so they, did, all these so they defeat the mind player in season two, and then the Russians come. And yes. Then the 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 great the biggest of bads in the eighties. Right. So the thing the thing Pretty is, much. like. There's there's a guy who uh, I don't know what his official title is, but all the theorists call him the Russian Terminator, um, and he's essentially the Russian version of Hopper, okay. uh, except less drunk and less fat, and therefore more effective. Yeah, um, and he just which, sort of like runs around, which and of like, course uh, makes him scarier. Right, it makes him scarier, and he he's he's the Russian Terminator because he he like just sort of like stands up and like walks off things that like. Normal people shouldn't, uh, because he's a he's a badass, and that's what badasses do. Um, and then he's like in a funhouse, you know, hall of mirrors, and that was a thing because that was a thing. I think they stole from the guest, but uh, I mean, it was a good scene regardless. <laughs> so the, the, mind the Russians, the is Russians dead. are the Russians are making a whole. In the, in, the, in the dimensional plane to try to bring the mind flares back. Yeah. To make them into super soldiers. Nobody um, believes... Um, oh, also, there's Nobody a, believes Dustin or... or well, no one, no one believes Dustin. Dustin... No one believes Dustin that Dustin has a girlfriend. That's first off. That's really important. <gasps> oh, right. yeah! Yeah, he went to summer um, camp. This is 4th of July now. So oh, because she lives in Canada. No, yeah. no, no. She lives, she lives in Utah because she's Mormon. Um, oh, right. Her name is Susie. Mormons don't have boyfriends. Her name is Susie. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's why. That's why she. You know, they can't. They can't be too open about it because her her, her family won't approve. He actually says it in the show. Yeah. No. Over and over again. Actually. Because <laughs> they don't believe. Okay. It. Um, convenient plot is convenient. Um. God. What the. What the hell else was I going to talk about? Uh, there no, was. We've talked. We've talked about that. So before. he. The plot he, to move. Doesn't he move end up with like some kind of radio? Yeah, yeah, he, he he builds like a long distance ham radio thing that he has to like set like it takes like a, like two hours to set up like on a hill and, and like it sinks massive because he's trying to talk to his uh, girlfriend. Long distance dating in the eighties. Yeah, he's trying to talk to his girlfriend, but he ends up picking up on like a Russian radio. Yeah, he ends up picking up on Russian radio. And that's how they, they figure oh, out the okay. Russians are there. Okay, right. Um, and so Steve, who is this uh, wounded. Uh, Former popular kid gets really close with the kids and who's trying two. to take a shower. Yeah. Well, right. So, um, at the, so because because of things that happen in season two, Steve and Dustin become really really close. Okay. And uh, so Steve ends up taking this job at this ice cream parlor in, in the, the mall, mall. with yep. this with this chick who is Robin. His name Robin. At, she is both 
extremely irritating and great at the same oh, time. Oh, she's amazing. She is an asshole to him. Yeah. And, and you know what? She's playful about it at the very least, so he just takes it. Like, right. he's just like, whatever. Like, yeah, what? Steve lost his game, so he can't even pick up right. chicks anymore. And right, he's, trying, he's still right. trying to pick up, like, high school chicks, and he's like... He should be in like his first year of college. Yeah, he didn't go to college though. Okay. She makes fun of him, and and it, yeah. it's, but it's D- Dustin great. Dustin comes back from summer camp and like walks over to him, and they like have this like a secret handshake, and she just like sort of like pops her head out from the back and is like, "How many kids do you know?" Like, <laughs> like, like, because like all the other rest of the kids that are are in the group came by like all summer and like got free ice cream from him. Yeah, and her okay. gentle bullying is a very fun and enjoyable part of season three, in my opinion. And that, and that's yeah. yeah, it is. And it I is. like how you said that gentle bullying. It was of, it, it of is, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is and so the great. thing is, what like gives him especially, tough skin especially, for especially his later ego. in the season when you figure out where the gentle bullying's coming from. Right. Right. Um, and, and you figure out it's it's mostly because Steve was a dick in high school, which we already knew. Right. And she's and she feels Remember bad about him. it at the end of the season. And she like sort of apologizes, and she's like, "Look, I didn't know you stopped being a dick. Like, <laughs> I just no, I just really fair. wasn't paying attention all summer. So I, didn't, I wasn't looking at the people. Moving, you were moving giving into ice season, cream. moving into season three, the mind um, flayer starts to get stronger because the Russians have opened up this portal. Yes. So now they there was can, there like, was a thing from season two season that I was going to talk about that I forgot. Yeah. Well, now they can kind of like I'm sure the mind right. flayer can kind Eventually. of stand to possess multiple people and still be out like in the middle of summer because okay. heat is a very important thing to bother the mind flayer and the demigorgon and yeah. all of them because things. They come from a dimension but now without energy. So he's energy strong enough problem. and possessing enough people to where it doesn't really matter. He gets a hold of Billy, the new dick. Yeah. And Somebody Somebody else the, the guy with the mom. I don't quite remember if that. So happened. Billy Billy took a job at uh, as a lifeguard at the at the local That's pool, right. uh, and him and the female head lifeguard uh, they end up getting possessed by uh, the mind nice. flayer, and they start recruiting random people to basically become meat. And the thing is, I didn't realize this was such a, a, a prevailing uh, sort of theme in Lovecraftian style horror until recently. But like the just the theme of just like like flesh as meat is is a big thing. Take yeah. that for what you will. I don't. I mean, the predators, man. Uh, yeah, sort they're, of. They're basically. Uh, all and right. actually, yeah, I've heard it, I've heard it explained that way. Like, because do, does the Lovecraftian elder? Beings, do they have like normal physical forms? I don't remember. They do. Okay. They have. Well, I wouldn't call them normal, but they have physical forms. Right. The the great old ones all have forms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because I remember, like in one of the stories, uh, Cthulhu gets rammed by a ship, and he's just mostly gelatin and just forms back together. Yes. Okay. Because he is both uh, at the same time physical and and tangible and non physical and non tangible all at the same time because that's how Lovecraftian things work. Yeah, so it makes sense that uh, us as fleshy beings who rely on our physical manifestation to exist, kind of, yeah, and and, and, beca- and because the mind flayer economy. is attempting to manifest in the world, right. he's using these flesh bodies yeah. to formulate his himself a new body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did we mention? Billy is kind of being forced to do that in the season yet. I, I assume oh, I assume yeah. saying mind control did that. Yeah, by the mind flayer. Yeah, the mind flayer gets him. <laughs> so, so, so keep up with the podcast. A lot of things. Uh, keep up with the co- so, podcast. Uh, slowly over the course of this se- this uh, season, Billy is basically taking people in the town and bringing them to the mind flayer to. To be keep, up, keep up with the yeah. podcast. Yes. We're past that point. So, so the, are they getting possessed or are they getting consumed? Uh, controlled. Both. Both. Okay. At first, it's possession and control, and okay. then it's a consumption. Okay. And it's it, it, it initially starts off with the less important the people are, the more likely they are to be consumed almost immediately. Right. Um, and then because uh, they won't be missed, right? They and then eventually, useful. Billy Billy was the first one to get taken over, and he's also the last one left because he's. 
I guess I guess the mind flayer is sentimental. Yes, like uh, exactly. because honestly, in terms in terms of the people that he took over uh, in town and how important they are for trying to like do stuff in the town, Billy's not really that high up on the list. Mm-hmm. Lifeguard is not as usable a position as you might think it is. Yeah, no, nor is popular kid at high school. Nor is popular kid at high school. Uh, that is correct, especially since he's no longer in high school. He has graduated. Right. Um, but you know things like uh, like uh, the the female lifeguard's parents who were like the mayor or something, mm-hmm. like like a, or like a lawyer. Like he was he was like an actual like important dude, uh, but they get taken over. Like well, they could have been, they could have been useful. They're meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it would <laughs> they, they get used, they get they, used for a while, but right, right. It, like the mind flayer not knowing a whole bunch about human politics might not necessarily be a, that's true. A big oversight. That's true. You're just hey, I mean the way I look at it, Billy is a very like. I mean, he's rocking the mullet, man. He's attractive. He can. Right, he's, uh, yeah. he's, he's got he's got that like I mean, Billy Ray Cyrus he, thing going on. He was trying on. to to get it with Mike and Nancy's mom, you know. Like, why mess with things that work is kind of the concept I'm assuming so, the mind flayer is working he's under. He's capable, right? Teacher, if if he's sure. still right. supplying, Billy, Billy's getting a lot of stuff done. Essentially, yeah. Sure. Yeah, like he's he's, he's been horse. he's been doing some good some good footwork. Right. You know, he's he's been he's been doing like yeoman's work for for this for this he's, mind flare. He's the yeah. workhorse. Good. He's, of he's the a mind he's player. a real go getter of an intern. Right. Yeah. And right. So right. why what why bother replacing him with somebody who wants a salary? All right. All right. So continuing the, coffee is souls. Let's move forward in season three because I'm, I'm still not remembering a whole lot from the season past that point. I remember the plot with Billy pretty well, but I don't remember so much like the Russian deal. And the- uh, so the Russian deal, uh, it was uh, uh, Steve and Robin, uh, Dustin, and Lucas's little sister, who, whose name I can't remember. Oh, she was great in that show. Too. Oh, oh, so, oh, it's, oh, yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the, the four. The four of them sneak into Russian Central down down in, in the basement. That's in the basement right. of the mall, right? Right, um, right. And they they end up they end up kind of getting caught, and I think Steve. Tries to sacrifice himself so the kids and, and Robin can get away. Robin says, screw you, and just has the kids get away. Uh, and then the kids can't get away because they can't get out. And so, they, so they're like, Because you're they dealing hide. with the mush- Russian military and they don't just let people go? Right, so like the two kids well, they hide and they're trying to figure out how to get a message out. Robin, Robin and, um, and Steve are stuck no. with the Russians. They get caught. Yeah. And they're trying to get Robin to talk by beating the crap out of Steve. Makes yes! Sense. That's yeah. right. I forgot yes, about that's that. right. That's uh, right. So that was that was a thing that happened and that was that was fun. Um, talk about what exactly. They're, what they're did, trying they're trying to figure out who knows who okay. knows that the Russians are under there. Okay. Um at, but the uh, the the uh, the Hopper and Joyce storyline is they're trying to find uh, that random Russian spy guy Alexei. That's right. Uh, and the conspiracy theorist journalist. So the four of them sort of like are going on a road trip and trying to get away from Russian Terminator. Oh, and the conspiracy theory journalist is like the great relationship therapist too. Yeah, because at any time like one of like a couple from. One of the three groups comes around this conspiracy theorist journalist who can like speak Russian too, can he? Yeah. Wasn't uh, there a point in this season two where Hopper finds a bunch of tunnels? Or are we getting that? That's yeah. Oh my god! Keep up with the podcast. I, I'm mixing up the seasons. That's that's, 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 see, that's season two. You've but... been sitting here staring into space for an hour, man. Um, he's more worried about than the podcast. I'm hungry. Uh-huh. Yeah, that that's great. You can deal. Uh, you're an adult, almost. Almost. Anyways. Anyways, an adult, yes, functioning remains to be seen. I mean, I assume it functions. He had a kid. Well, it worked very well. Uh, anyway, once at least. Let's not do that. <laughs> I'm gonna Any shut days. my mouth. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So, all right. So they're looking for. The Russian spy. Yep. Um, so B yeah. plot is road trip to find Russian Terminator. All right. No, B plot is get away from Russian Terminator, get away find from Russian, Russian spy. Okay. 
Okay, um, so not the same people. Right, Russian okay. Terminator and Russian Spy are different people. Yeah, okay. Because uh, Russian Spy is a guy named Alexei, and he is a useless scientist. That's right. I forgot all about that. And all he wants to do is go to a fair and win a stuffed animal and get a cherry icy or something. That's right. That's right. They get That's him a cherry right. icy. Yes! Yes! I remember they get him, they get him like, like a yes. strawberry yes. icy and he hates it. And right. And he, 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 he's making all kinds of ridiculous demands because he thinks he has leverage. And eventually they're just like, look, we're just going to shoot you and bury you in the woods because you're not really that important. Right. right. And he's just like, all right, so what do you want? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. What do you want? Yeah, he only speaks Russian, so they yeah. need the journalist to, to Yeah, they need the journalist to talk to I him. think it wasn't, but speaking of, well, this doesn't have anything to do with the Russian. I just thought of this. Was in season three, when him and L are cleaning the cabin. Oh, right. He introduces L to Jim Croce. That's season two. Is it season two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. Anyway, so they, so they find the, the scientist and threaten to murder him and leave him in the woods so he doesn't get any more cherry ices. Yeah. <laughs> Which he never got to begin with. Yeah, he never actually got he the got right strong flavor ice tea anyway. Damn. But, it's a hard but knock life. He, he did get the stuffed animal at the fair, though. Okay. For, All right. So for, like, for like a minute, right, right before he gets murdered by Russian Terminator. Oh, yeah. damn. So. <laughs> it's a hard knock life. <laughs> Needless to say, he was put on ice. Wow. No. Really? Uh, wow. No. No. Well, no. I'm not giving you that so, one. Ever. No. How did? How we? I'm not even sure why you made an ice pun. I feel like we can I, close out Russian, kind of the uh, cherry icy. So this. The okay, so synopsis. We we three. get a lot. We we've gotten a lot of on tangents about actors and actresses and things and. Racism and everything else. And so Daryl Davis. We're not going to give up. away. We're not going to give away the end of season three. Um, if you've dies. enjoyed, if you've enjoyed the story so far, go watch it. Because I tell you what, it's like I said, it's one of those things that the the story is so well written that it'll keep you drawn in. Um, if you can't get into it, I understand. It's one of those things. Not everybody. It's not everybody's cup of tea. But if you've never seen it. And the, th- the thing is, people go watch it. People, people will say, yes. people will say, if you're if you're a nerd, you'll love it. But the thing is, we know nerds like like uh, Nick and and his wife who they thought it was okay. They watched like the first couple episodes, and that was it. Yeah, you're talking about and, Emily and yeah, and yeah. Nick um, but you know, like it's not for everybody. Even if you're a nerd, it's just. It's it's a it's a good show. Most people will probably like it's it if well they watch written. it. And, it's well written, but it's not for everybody. It's well written. The story's kind of got a good hook to it. The actors do a really good job of doing portraying what they need to portray. I, oh, uh, the re- the thing I was going to say from season two was uh, the other the other kids from the project that Eleven was in. So she she runs into to number yeah. eight. That's oh, right. that's right. That's, that's like right. One episode. Yeah. Though. That was that was more, a okay. Se- was season, a season, 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 season two starts with with number eight, and they leave it alone until eleven runs into her. Like right, in because the, like she runs third, away. Like the third to last because she runs season. away right, from she right, runs away from Hopper now. and ends uh, up out in the which, streets. That was right. that was a thing that I wish that they had expanded upon uh, in season three, and they never did. Uh, they made it. They made it seem like that they were that it was going to be a big deal, and it was going to like move into other mm-hmm. things. And it never gets brought back up again. Like it's it's everyone's least favorite episode from season two because it doesn't go anywhere. And then season three happens, and you know what? It still hasn't gone anywhere. So we're gonna. That was it. Was good to see other kids that had to go through what Eleven went through. Yeah. So yes. it, it yeah. does. Like, it does I, show I would, a little I would bit. Like to see, I would like to see some of the other experiments, like. Uh, how did this start? Who was number one? Is number one still alive? Is right. was there was there right. a zero? Was there like uh, two or what? What's what's nine and ten? Like why why is it eight and eleven? Like right. There, there there could be a lot of good story to build within the next couple of seasons, which I don't want to really, I don't want to really again spoil too much of the story. I know we've talked about spoilers before, and if you can't deal with spoilers, deal with it. It's whatever, but. Like, if we try to 
I don't know. Guess what's gonna happen in the next season? I was gonna season. say, should we should we do our internet thing and actually speculate on season four? Um, I do. I, I want to say yes, but I want to say no all at the same time, um, because the speculations are are great, and I and I get a lot of like, this is what they think is gonna happen, and this is who they think the American is, and so there's been a lot of stuff like previews and like. Um, yeah. Little things about this person called the American that ends up in Russia. Um, I think if you watch the uh, after season three, if you watch the the um, preview for the next season, we all kind of get the gist of who the American is. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that's who the American is because the American say, could I still, still, I still be somebody I still slightly contest that. Right. We can't really talk too much about what we expect from season four without talking about a huge. Well, Spoiler about the ending of season three. Well, sure. I have ideas I could discuss about that, but that's for another But day. so, I, my thing is, is that mm-hmm. I really just want to get across that Stranger Things was one of those phenomenons that happened that actually, to me, became so popular, and I actually enjoyed going through. Yeah. Um, I actually enjoyed the ride that it gave you from watching the first episode all the way through the last episode of season three. I enjoyed everything about it. I enjoyed from all the nostalgic stuff that they put out. I enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed the plots. I enjoyed, you know, again, I enjoyed the ride. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the story. Yes. What's your question? So now that you've sat through this podcast and listened as Mr. Non-Watcher, Tyler, mm. are you perhaps more interested in watching the show? I don't... I I think that it would be an interesting... Because uh, you started this podcast trying to define its genre. It's sounding more mystery than it sound than horror. Yes. If I'm no, being it, honest, when I, when I say when I say horror, I mean it in like a Lovecraftian Eldritch style, oh, right? Okay. So, which Lovecraftian Kinda horror is very it. much mystery, yeah. which is very pushy, right. pushy into the thriller mysteries. Yeah, and yeah, so that's it's very thriller. Um, but so when I when I when so I it, it is it is it is more Lovecraftian style mm-hmm. horror. It's more uh, horror of the unknown. Right. Figure out what's going on. When I throw it in the horror genre, and the only reason why I do that is because that's where it is put. That's where it was put when it was uh, like it, sold I, to me to go watch. When I, when, right? I, when, I, when I say horror, I don't mean scary. Yeah, and that that's like that that's not a point against it. It's more of a point right. for it for me. Yeah, because it doesn't. Oh yeah, there's no like, jump scares. I I watched The Hills Have Eyes and it was fine, but which which version? The, I, the old one or the new one? Probably the new one. I don't. I straight up don't know. Honestly, the the new The Hills Have Eyes is a very okay movie. Yeah, but like, it, it like, is thoroughly in the okay category. Yeah, I know. From what I've seen, horror isn't famous for its good storylines in the it, in a way that it seems like right. Stranger Things. Horror, so horror, I, horror has definitely horror one has subgenres. Right, and if you want to go for good stories, you have to pick the right subgenre of horror. Okay. Like if you're if you're trying to go to like a slasher film and find a good story, well, guess what? You're not going to find. <laughs> right, right. Like That's it's okay. not yeah. it's not going to happen. Again, bro. no. From from a writer's point of view, here's the thing: is like there's a couple of us in this room, at least four of us I know, that would love to become a writer. Yeah. Because we have all these stories in our head from all the stuff that we've done. So the writers are, are Tyler, Tim, Devin, and I. We've all if I if I could write all, half as fast as I think. That'd right, I'd have like six series out right now. Right, so no, no, for me, I have for me, I have stories in my head that I would love to put down on paper. But for me, it's not about you know coming up with the next story. It's about getting it onto paper. Yeah, right. So, as a from a writer's point of view, this story that that what is Stranger Things is one of those ones that, as a writer's side of things. Mm-hmm. You will enjoy from the beginning to the end. Okay, it's no different than a good book. Yeah, like I mean, except season two, that one episode you might think is a little dull. Yeah, yeah but yeah, the thing is, is like has everybody has their reading. every every like that book series <laughs> has its. Hiccups I thought, I thought, it, brought, I thought it brought up right. some interesting points, but at the same time, it, was all it lasted as long as all the other episodes, and it really shouldn't have. So <laughs> with with my little monologue about the story and how it was a great ride and I loved going through it. 
um, I think we're going to come to a conclusion here. Um, normally, I would say let's do some recommendations, but the problem is there's six of us that take a long time. So does anyone have any recommendations? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, um, as, a, as a podcast wide for today's recommendation is, if you haven't seen, if you have not seen um, Stranger Things, or if you have not even thought about picking up and watching Stranger Things, at least give it a chance. Mm-hmm. Yes. And look at it. Look at it in a way of like this is such a great story and very well portrayed by some really good kid actors, and the the directors and the producers and the writers themselves have done a good job of making it happen in the decade that it needs to happen in. Yes. So, with all that, I'm going to actually go ahead and conclude this episode and okay. say uh, talk at you later. Okay. Bye guys. See you later. Yeah, I get it.